hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition where it has been like two and a half weeks since I've played but now uh, the system's actually working out really well and hopefully this video will actually go up today and there won't be a gap at all but even if there is only a day gap I'd say that's that's pretty good I'm pretty stoked anyway we want to talk to Tally more I just didn't want to like overwhelm in one video with Tally, but we'll go down a branch path with Tally and chat a bit and then go upstairs to the menu to the galaxy map. Hey Shepard, do you need something? Talk to me. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarries 17 in the flotilla, million. and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. What a... The, the whole idea of being a Quarian is just... It's like, holy cow, like... It's incredibly tight knit, but it is one of those things where like personal space and like certain uh, like like civil liberties, like she said, that like a lot of other species take for granted just can't. Uh, and yeah, like you live on ships, like you can't like you can't like have an unchecked population. You know how weird would that be to be like the 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 generation that's allowed to have siblings, right? Like that would kind of change up. Like I think that would change up like some like was like sociological stuff going on you know like what the way it currently is it's like you don't have any sibling i don't know i feel like it would change things in subtle ways at, at the very least that's your government the conclave is our civilian branch of government each ship can elect a representative to serve on the conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole on matters that affect an individual ship however the captain has the final say it's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. Yeah, you would, uh, you'd think, right? So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. I mean, it's very it's Roman. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. I think it's Roman, right? Yeah, where, like, they had, like, the... Was it Greek? I can't. I'm, I'm a terrible historian. Um, but they had the concept of the tyrant, right? Which is now, like, a bad word, like, labeled with, like, ba like bad connotations. But in Greek slash Roman, whatever it was, um, I could look it up, but I don't want to edit out me looking it up. <laughs> um, you, in times of military duress, or I think any time of like 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 plague or famine potentially, but especially military, uh, you would elect, or you would you I guess you would you would like elect somebody to act as tyrant, where they they were like the single leading person in times of like emergency when quick decisions were needed and like councils were too too slow to act they would elect one individual whose anything they said went and i think the term i could be wrong it could be i think yeah i think it lasted until the crisis or whatever was over maximum like 20 years i think 
and then uh, after that they were exiled. They had to never come back, um, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so you had ultimate power for however long it, you needed to have it, right? You were the final say in the first say. Oh, sorry, if I don't edit that out, I just sneezed. Uh, but then, as soon as you were, as soon as that crisis was over, in theory, you were exiled. Which I think worked for a while. Until one of the Caesars. <laughs> um... Okay, that's good. We'll, we'll leave it there. I should go. See you later. I should go. I should go. We'll do the- we'll do it in order. Quarian, Geth, Pilgrimage. I'm gonna sneeze again. This is the worst. I'm allergic to video games. Anyway, I'm still just pleased as punch with how shiny everything is. And now, like, I like how everything look, looks that, that would be scuffed is kind of scuffed, you know, like, looks lived in. It's not, like, super shiny. <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay, we're going upstairs to look at the galaxy map. We've talked to everybody, done my due diligence, and I'll never forget to do it again. I'll never get too excited by the map again. I'm lying. Um, let's see. Come on. Right, so we... Did I, did I talk to Liara? I talked to Liara, didn't I? Did I not? I might not have. I'm sorry, it's been two and a half weeks. So I'm not 100% sure. I know we did Caden. We did Rex. And we did... Ashley. Because that conversation went down interesting lines, I remember. We'll talk about Chakwas. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? What? Oh, never mind. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I should go! You never realize how many times she says it. Commander. Aha! Are you coming to- Aha! You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. This is just a little weird because, like, I think I've mentioned it in a previous video, but, like, how does she even know Saren's name? You know? Like, I, I don't know if that's, like, a plot hole or if, like, she's heard something. I mean, she's been underground for, like, months. <laughs> or she's been in this, like, backwater planet for, like, months, as far as I can tell. Maybe not. But, and then, like, what actually was the falling out with her and Benezia? I never really go into that, so... Also, somebody did bring up, and this is something that I've seen brought up at other places, that it's a little bit weird. That whole trope of, like, you know, I'm a hundred human years old or whatever, but I'm very young for my species, just barely an adult. It's like, hmm, <laughs> questionable. <laughs> also, I know that the she got those eyebrows because she was supposed to, like, the developers wanted her to be able to emote more recognizably, like her face, to like show emotion in a way that's more recognizable to like us as humans, because we actually express a lot with our eyebrows. Um, and the Asari don't have eyebrows, but they <laughs> decided that Liara, who's a little grubby archaeologist, is gonna paint some eyebrows <laughs> onto her face. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea of Liara. I like the idea of Liara as an Asari archaeologist, but they never le they don't lean enough into that in my opinion. I think her voice is kind of bland. I think her personality is kind of bland. I think it's a it's a little tiny bit weird that she's like I'm just a baby, even though I'm like a hundred years old. So there's just little things like I get it. She's very pretty, but even then, like 
the eyebrows kind of weird me out. <laughs> so personally for me, she's not necessarily a favorite. I think she's better than Ashley. Uh, in some way, but even now, I think Ashley, Ashley, if, if, you know, like I, I, I have more of a reaction to Ashley than I do to Liara in a lot of ways. Uh, anyway, don't worry, Liara. I trust. I, I trust you. I know you won't let me down. I just it met means you. A lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. I just met you, and we're gonna. I'm, oh, I trust you one hundred percent. No, but anyway. I like Liara. I just, she's, I know some people are like, she's Bay, and I'm like, not for me. But I respect it. I respect it. I ain't hating on anybody's choices. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Hey, you must get lonely. No. Uh, anyway, her life sounds dope to me. <laughs> I'm not very interesting. I unearth long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Blah, blah, blah. To be fair, she's saying I unearth mundane items. And that's truly archaeology, like, in a nutshell. Only rarely, very, very rarely in, like, academic fields do you get to unearth, like, freaking pyramids. You know, for the most part, you're walking around going through ancient trash heaps or, like, the remnants of, like, what they left behind, you know? So... I totally get it. <laughs> you must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. I'm fascinating. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No. What? <laughs> I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the oh, goddess. Oh, by the How goddess. How could I be so dense? <laughs> you must think I am a complete and utter fool. <laughs> like, listen to your Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. She's like, I'm a nerd. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. I get it, though. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. This is exactly probably, uh, like, I'm like, I make fun of it. I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, they're really pushing the nerd thing. But that's exactly what I would do in a conversation with, like, somebody I was interested in. Like, just like as, like, a, oh, you're an interesting person or something. I would probably trip over myself and land flat on my face verbally potentially physically and just be like please ignore me don't talk to me i'm so sorry pretend i don't exist i hate everything about everything do you know why benezia joined up with saren i don't understand it she was always outspoken about the need for the asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events maybe she thought allying herself with saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run at least i hope so this hurts you doesn't it None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Well, what happened that made you freaking not talk to her? Anyway, I do like... I should go. <laughs> Goodbye. <gasps> Ooh, I do like to leave some conversational track, like, lines... Because, you know, sometimes you come back to talk to them and there's nothing, there's nothing to talk about, really. Like, nothing's changed. But I like to leave some of those track lines to make it more interesting. Um, level me up. Mm, store discount. Uh, I do want to work my way towards lift. Oh, but tactical armor. Charges a portion of your shields and will restore them even while you're under fire. Frick. Medium armor. Give me lift. <laughs> lift is so useful. My friend's been playing a uh, full biotic on this, though, and I forgot about Shockwave, which is actually one of the best abilities in the game, in my opinion, in any of the games, one, two, or three, because it freaking lets you push the husks away from you, and that's all anybody can really ask for. Oh my gosh, that ability save. I think in two I played. I don't know if I played a full biotic. I, I have played a full biotic at some point. I just don't know exactly when. I talked to Garrus. I talked to Rex. I talked to Ashley. Caden. Okay, Joker. Oh, let's go, get my, let's go look at my room. Blah, blah, blah. What you doing, Caden? Hmm. 
Personal manual. Oh, I did want to look at my personal timeline. You were born on Earth, but you never knew your parents. Blah, blah. A child of the streets, you learned to live by your wits and gets, surviving in the hidden underbelly of the metropolises of humanity's homeworld. Eager to find a better life, you joined the Alliance military when you came of age. You were on shore leave at Elysium when the first wave of the Skillian Blitz struck. A massive coalition force of slavers, crime syndicates, and Batarian warlords attacked the human colony, determined to wipe it out. You rallied the civilian inhabitants, leading them in the desperate fight to hold off the invaders. When the enemy troops broke through the colony's defenses, you single handily held them off and sealed the breach. I have no idea how, but I'm a freaking superhero and it's amazing. Like, they must have only broken through in a small area or I had like a freaking Gatling gun or something. <laughs> After hours of brutal fighting, reinforcements finally arrived and the enemy broke ranks and fled. Because of your actions, Elysium was saved and you were regard regard <laughs> regarded throughout the Alliance as a true hero. I mean, I can see definitely like the true hero trope can get like overplayed and stuff, but when I first played it, this game, I don't know, it wasn't something that I was like, uh, that I hadn't played that many video games, honestly. Like, I had played a few several times, but not like a wide variety. I don't know, this just appealed to me a lot. And I liked coming from like a scrappy background to like somebody who like, you know, became a hero, you know? Um, what were they gonna, there's a, there's a hecking timeline, though, and I don't remember where it is, like, you can, like, see an actual, is it the humanity? Oh, 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 I'm so good, actually. Where'd it go? Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on the moon on Luna. It's formally founded on July 24th. Becomes so like 2069. That ain't too far. 2069. Nice. What a good year. Uh, man, that'll be so weird if we if we make it to that. You know what I mean? Be like, where's our moon base? Becomes the first human settlement on Mars. Oh, freak! And we're already trying to send the billionaires out into space to Mars. Uh, this is, that's way later. Head fall, Ashland, De Helium 3, construction of Gagarin Station beyond the orbit of Pluto. Prospectors, 2148, the, that's the big one. They discover Prothean ruins on Mars. Translation of Prothean data leads humans to the Charon. Sharon, Karen, Mass Relay, Sharon. Systems Alliance founded to coordinate exploration and colonize organization of extrasolar worlds. That would be interesting if we made a whole other like group essentially because they are distinct. Each each country on Earth, which we don't get too much into detail on that, but they do. Um, like they still exist, right? Um, and so the governments are their own thing, but the Systems Alliance is essentially the representative of humanity in space, whereas the Earth governments just focus on, like, Earth stuff in their own respective countries. Um, but they still make it decisions that influence the other. It would be really complicated, I'm sure. I don't know if we would actually do that. Uh, shipping accident. Oh, no! It couldn't be just a giant government slash corporate experiment. It's like, oh, they would never do that back when I first played this. I'm like, oh, that would never happen. And now I'm like, it would definitely happen. It def definitely happen. Every uh, 30% of children born in Singapore suffer cancerous growth. Commander Shepard is born. I'm born in 2154. Children in Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. There we go, 2157. So three years after I was born. That was something I couldn't remember exactly when it happened. Um... I wasn't sure. I think somebody did correct me, but I wasn't sure if the first contact war happened like a few years before I was born or a few, or a few years after. So that was after. Uh, humans learn the potential of biotics. Blah, blah, blah. Systems Alliance Parliament. Humans establish. They don't, they don't say... I, maybe it all just happened. I was like, they don't say when the first contact war ended, but it must have, it must have ended in the same year. I think it did. I think that's tr that's right. It wouldn't have been dragged out. The council was like, "Yo, chill, Turians. Like, calm down." 
Batarian slavers attack the Alliance colony on Mindor. That is one of the other backgrounds. You can be, oh shoot, colonist. If you take the colonist background, your family was taken when you were like 16 or something. Uh, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. 2154. You're always born in 2154. Um, so how old would you be? And so, yeah, like 16. Yeah. Um, your family is like killed. Um, and you're like one of the, you're like the only survivor or one of the only survivors and the Alliance comes to pick you up and then you, you know, you join the Alliance. Skillian Blitz was six years later. That's my current background. Thresher Moss devour the Alliance colony of Akuz. That's another background. Um. Yeah, the retaliation for Skillian Blitz and Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slayers. Current date, 2183. Dope. Dope. I think we're 29. I think Commander Shepard is 29. Which is weird. I remember... I don't know. When I first played this, I was like... I don't know. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna reminisce. Anyway. I'm 30 now, so it's a little weird to be older than her. Only by a little bit. But it's still a little weird. You know? You look at these games as like, Oh, when I grow up, I wanna be that. You know? And then... Now, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna get existential about it. It's fine. It's still fine. You can still want to grow up and be Shepard no matter how old you are, right? Anyway. Oh, can I... Thought I had picked up those. Anyway. We've been talking it up. So we just did a... Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Valuable Minerals. Gimme, gimme. Also, give me the other- we have another one, don't we? Uh, ooh, you know what? Maybe. Look at all these free- <laughs> Somebody did say that there's an outcome to this that you could do that I hadn't thought of before. Um, you could actually, um... Maybe I'll spoil it a little bit, but apparently you can give the cheating system to the proprietor of whatever it was. What place? Flux. So that could get it out of my friggin' out of my what do you call it? My my list here without me ever having to actually do it. So that could be interesting. Uh, the details are a bit vague. Yes, let's do this one. Hydra system in the Argos Row cluster. You know, I was curious if they were gonna give us the Andromeda map. Or at least like a, a hybrid Andromeda map for this. But I do like, I like both, honestly. The Andromeda map's a little slower and I do wish you could just like, I, when I click on a planet, I like just being able to zoom up on it and read it. I don't necessarily want to travel to it, which is what happened in Andromeda for every planet. You couldn't just like read, you couldn't just like hover over it and read about it. You, if you click on it to read it, you have to travel to it. And it was just like, this is wasteful of gas, I'm just gonna say. So what I like to do generally, oh, it's so gorgeous, is um, do like a main mission type thing. Um, anyway, I think I was saying I like to do some side missions, like uh, like side quests between major missions. You know, I don't want to like just do all the major missions at once. You gotta sprinkle in a good helping of side missions, and I also. The thing is, is, I tend to like to scan each system thoroughly before I leave. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do some scanning. I know it's gonna be the most exciting thing, but I'm always obs obsessed. With Message coming in. Ah! Patching it through. That's coming in. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasir. I, uh... I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. 
I'll be waiting in the diplomat's lounge on the Presidium. I know there's a couple different outcomes for that one too, if you um go and find the mission. Ooh, nice. Recon team. There was a small functioning biodome, no sign of anyone living there. The data console with an inside protein data disk inside. Um, if you finish the mission and then go talk to Nasana, it can go very differently than it, like if you stumble upon the mission, because you can just stumble upon it without actually going to talk to her. Uh, or you can go talk to her and then you get the actual mission and like, you know, the, the points for the, the plot point for it. There you go. And it works out a little like there's different dialogue for each one, which is cool. Uh, the surface is covered by wide swaths, swathed swaths of ancient dark cloud of lava, possibly indicating the world was created through an impact with some other body of the system. Magnetic field is non existent. You can land safely for direct grounding. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Edelis. Commander, I'm picking up a signal eh? from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Are we gonna land? Oh my gosh, we're gonna land! See, this is why I like to explore, because you find stuff. It's terrestrial plane with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Not great <laughs> for us. Even though the surface is covered by a wide desert, some silicon sand, only a few areas of igneous rock, highlands to break the abrasive dust trouble. This is the kind of thing, these things, I would have loved researching. Like, you have to research geology and, like, extrasolar, like, you know, planetary stuff, you know, like, you gotta, like, astronomy, like, you, it would have been cool to, like, do the research for these planets, so I always read them because I think they're just super cool. Italis's orbit is congested with debris thrown inwards by the gravity of the gas giant Otomalka, Otomalka, due to a high rate of meteor impact, exploration is highly dangerous. And, like, not just those things, like, maybe, like, hydrology and, like, plate tectonics and, like, I mean, I guess that you can throw that all under geology, essentially, but... Squad! Add to squad. Let's go, squad. Ah, oh, we're all just so beautiful. Shotgun squad. Off we go. Could you imagine? Every time, I'm like, it would suck. It would suck so much to just get chucked out. Oh, jeez. Alright. Oh my gosh. I'm so ready to see a planet that's not like the starting planet. Look at this. I want to get hit by a meteor. Or I guess it's not really a meteor. It's just debris from volcanoes. Oh yes, let's level up. Equip mm. heavy armor. Yes. Not that I have any Krogan armor, but, you know, it's good. Oh, jeez, we've got so many fun things for her. Um, damping. Shuts down enemy tech and biotic abilities. Let's use the decryption skill to open secure objects. Grants the sabotage ability, which shuts down electronics. Let's use the electronic skill to repair or bypass objects. So that's the same as decryption. Oh no. I see. I see. We should put some into first aid. Hacking is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to do core and machinist. And armor. No, let's do. And now we look at the map. I love the maps in this game. Anomaly? That's not, I know it's over there, so we're gonna go over here first, potentially. I love the topographic maps, okay? Like, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of the topographic map, because it lets you kind of plot a way up, potentially. 
Uh, this, however, is just gonna, it's gonna suck trying to go up the mountain. There it is, there's the debris. I know what's over there, I'm pretty sure I do. See, look, that dang nab nomad couldn't do this. Hecking Nomad, which is a beautiful sh it's a beautiful vehicle. Aha! Minerals. But it does not have, it is definitely a downgrade from the make, look at this, look at this. We just, it may be slow going, but we're gonna get there. Anyway, I love doing the minerals thing. It definitely helps go towards, like, the completion, uh, achievements. Not just the completion, like, uh, achievement itself, but the completion with, like, certain squad mates, which I think I will, I'm, I'm, I've had them for long enough to be able to do that. I think taking them to go get Liara is is a big one. Like you want to you want to you want to get the achievements of I'm using certain like two certain squad mates, you know, for like the majority of the game, like 75% of the game, you have to you have to start using them as soon as possible, preferably before you go get Liara. <laughs> oh, it's just gonna be more goodies, of which I. Have. My electronic skills too low. What the? Fr what, what do you? Negative contacts. Commander. What do you mean? My electronic skill is pretty high. I'm not coming back here. There's maybe armor in there. How is my electronic skill too low? I'm at like I'm, I'm like halfway up it. That's upsetting. Oh, wow. Anyway, I should probably go. Before we do whatever exciting thing is here, um, I'm going to go ahead and head out. But thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, I hope you enjoy exploring planets because I am really looking forward to running around on the planets and, and being like, whoa! <laughs> you know, there's not much, but I, I enjoy it nonetheless. I enjoyed it even when it was low graphics, or when it wasn't legendary, I guess. But thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one.